Hello everyone, this is R.S. Miller at the endtimenews.org and today is October 9th, 2013. This is your Fast Track Report. On October 7th, during a legislative session of the House of Representatives, the Democrat from Texas, Sheila Jackson Lee, made a statement which seemed to imply that martial law was coming to America if the government shutdown continued. In her speech to the House, she made reference to the economic collapse of Greece, but she did also state that America is not Greece. She mentioned that her constituents realized the importance of negotiations referring to negotiating the approval of a bill to get the government open again, and at the same time they also recognized the need not to give in on the affordable health care issue. She went on to say, it is not the truth to suggest that there are not enough voters, members of Congress that would vote right now, today, to open this government. The representative continued to make valid points, or at least as far as I can tell they appear to be valid. But then she made a very curious and ominous statement, perhaps a sign of things to come to America. She said, We have martial law. What that means, and my colleagues knows what it means, is that you can put a bill on in just minutes. Is she suggesting that if an agreement is not reached soon, the president may implement martial law in a preemptive effort to maintain national security? Well, I simply do not know what she meant. But what I do know is that if millions of Americans suddenly lose their income, face hopelessness and despair, there will most certainly be rioting and anarchy across large sections of the country, very much similar to what took place in Greece, except that in America, we have a lot more guns. You guys go ahead and watch her speech, which is only about five minutes long, and decide for yourselves what she's implying. Please feel free to share, download, or re-upload this video. If you have a desire to receive salvation through Jesus Christ, follow the link in the box below and pray the prayer with a sincere heart and you will be saved. In the meanwhile, stay alert, stay safe, and may God bless you. The chair recognizes the lady from Texas, Ms. Jackson Lee, for five minutes. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and good morning. I thought it was important to come as soon as I arrived after 24 hours in my district, which after voting to restore the payment compensation to our federal employees, some 800,000 plus who are now laid off, which means that Americans are not receiving vital services, I wanted to go home for a moment to be able to interact with my constituents and in that period of time I met doctors, I met carpenters and millwrights, I spoke to those in the arts community, I commemorated the 70th anniversary of Catholic Charities, had a mass at Sacred Heart Cathedral, listened to our cardinal talk with great faith, the cardinal of our community, Houston Galveston Diocese and the Cardinal uh, that is named by the previous Pope who now resides in our community who gave us the words the just live by faith and I indicated that I would come back to let this body know that the people who are being affected are not Republicans or Democrats or Green Party or Independents or any other definition other than Americans and I was overwhelmed by those who came up to me and indicated from airline pilots uh, that negotiation and interaction is important, but don't break on the issue of the Affordable Care Act and getting this government open. They understand it. These are people who are being impacted, like the workers today of an aircraft company in Connecticut that laying off 2,000 people, uh, the 
Pentagon contractor that will soon be laying off thousands of people, the tax deadline for those who haven't filed coming up on October 15th, needing IRS workers to help them with issues that they have in terms of filing their tax forms, or even the federal courts who will be assessing on October 15th whether or not they can keep their doors open for the moving of justice in this nation. And so I think it is extremely important that whatever is tying you up, whatever is keeping you from looking at the common good, and I would offer to say to the American people, everyone knows that we are not Greece. Uh, we wish the best for the people of Greece. But America is the richest country in the world, $4 trillion in economy, and a country that is looked to from all around the world. Our economy is bigger than the European Union. That means countries like Spain and Germany, France, England, all of those members who as well are our allies but look to America. How shameful it is for someone to be held and, if you will, tied up by their own individual personal interests. One would ask if the Founding Fathers, as imperfect as uh, America was as she began, if the Founding Fathers that came from the 13 colonies and various districts and probably interests had held to those specialized interests, would we have created a nation that started out by saying we organized to create a more perfect union? albeit that there were groups of populations that did not have dignity and justice and citizenship at that time, something that I could look back uh, in bitterness. But I do not, because this is the greatest nation in the world, but we are not showing ourselves that way. It is not the truth to suggest that there are not enough voters, members of Congress, that would vote right now today to open this government. It's something called a continuing resolution, but it's a bill that you put on the floor that has been passed already by Republicans and Democrats in the United States Senate. This is not an idea of anyone over another person. Republican and Democratic senators have already voted for this clean bill that we could vote on today. We have martial law. What that means, and my colleagues know what it means, is that you can put a bill on in just minutes. So rather than deciding amongst your children which ones to feed, which is the approach that my Republican friends and leadership are doing, squeezing out one little skinny bill versus another, squeezing out bills that leave out the FAA inspectors, leave out ICE that deals with immigration, leave out those who are dealing with young people who are undocumented, leave out those who are helping young couples who want to get a home with a mortgage processing, who knows whose home is going to be impacted by the heavy rains that are up and down the East Coast? Who may need federal assistance? All of that is being dumbed down, lost, because we have not opened the government. I come today, Mr. Speaker, to ask all of us to turn to our American card and hold up the American card. I am an American and vote to open this government right now. I yield back. General, this time has expired.